Welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, and um, uh, once you become a client uh, or customer, uh, what you get is, of course, you'll get Bookmap, the, and, uh, but you get education that comes along with it. Okay, you will get access to the educational course uh, where it's a four part series. Uh, we go through um, understanding just basic market mechanics that uh, a lot of us uh, are, aren't uh, really familiar with, uh, understanding book sweeps um, and uh, uh, really how the market uh, uh, moves uh, on, a, on a very binary level. Uh, and, uh, and then we, we take that as, uh, that's in part one of the educational uh, course, uh, and then we'll take that into structure and volume and uh, the limit order book, uh, and then starting to understand the context of all of that uh, together. And uh, it's actually uh, pretty simple stuff, um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the education we are accustomed to uh, seeing is about indicators and, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, some sort of uh, overbought, oversold, uh, you know, type of um, uh, uh, range or something, and uh, it's just, uh, it's not the, uh, uh, it's very different than that, all right? This is uh, much more about really understanding the basics of the transactions, uh, uh, that's the tape, and then understanding the um, uh, uh, the auction as well, okay? Because it is an auction, uh, and uh, uh, Bookmap is uh, excellent at um, uh, displaying that auction, uh, and reading that context of the auction. So that's the educational course. Now, the advanced order flow webinars uh, support the material uh, in that educational course. Uh, we do it every day at uh, 11 Eastern, so in another 25 minutes. Uh, and um, we uh, uh, go through uh, and, and support that, that uh, course content uh, in the live market, okay? In fact, uh, I can give you guys a link uh, to it uh, today, so if you want to go and visit uh, and just get a feel for what we do there, uh, I'm not going to answer uh, a lot of basic questions. Uh, you know, this is why we make the distinction uh, between the two here. This is uh, the platform details webinar uh, for you to ask questions, uh, basic questions, and also about the platform. Uh, we'll uh, go into much, much more detail about the order flow in context of the market and reading it in Bookmap in the advanced order flow webinars, okay? So uh, let, me, uh, let me give you that link, uh, just a moment. Okay, and you can go and register for it. So look in the chat box there in uh, the GoToWebinar, okay? And so let me jump back in into bookmap.com and just go through uh, some basics here uh, for those of you who are new, uh, because we have a new uh, a beta version that we just released that has uh, access to digital currencies. So now you can trade um, uh, Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum and uh, Litecoin and et cetera. Um, so uh, at, at the website here, you can scroll down. There's an intro video here. This is just a couple minutes long. Uh, information about uh, Bookmap, some of the benefits, testimonials. Uh, we also connect to uh, U.S. equities via NASDAQ Total View. Uh, you might want to read about the uh, advantages of the data feed that we have here. Uh, scroll down a little bit further. Connectivity, okay? Uh, we are not a data provider. Uh, we are a, uh, a software uh, a visualization trading platform. Okay, you will need to connect uh, to the live markets via uh, these uh, uh, data providers or brokers. Okay, so you can also see some platforms here as well, like NinjaTrader, TTX Trader Pro, and Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation. Okay, now we connect to these uh, platforms via the API. Okay, but we are a platform just like they are. Uh, we actually have our own API as well for writing your own custom in indicators and trading strategies, automated trading strategies. Okay, so we're, we're a platform just like they are, and you'll connect directly to the platform uh, with uh, your data feed.
okay, using rhythmic CQG, gain capital, IQ feed, or transact data, our dev experts, uh, and then GDAX uh, exchange. Okay, we connect to the uh, uh, GDAX uh, for the digital currencies. All right, uh, here's the pricing tab uh, and uh, more uh, detailed information about this because this has just recently changed. Um, there are really only two versions here of Bookmap, uh, digital and global. Uh, and you can uh, subscribe to these e either monthly or yearly. If you go yearly, you get the 20% discount. Uh, so um, the digital uh, free version here, okay, it connects to uh, GDAX. Uh, you only get one uh, symbol, okay? You can't trade from the chart, uh, and uh, but it's real time. Uh, and, um, uh, you, you know, you get the uh, basic education that comes along with it. Um, and... Um, uh, but you have limited support. You don't get the advanced education, um, and um, uh, you don't be, you're not able to look at more than one symbol at a time. Okay, uh, but you get a good feel for what Bookmap is. Uh, the Digital Plus here, you can see it's $37 per month, uh, and what you get with that is the ability to trade right from the chart using the one-click trading, uh, and uh, you get um, uh, to record and replay the data. Uh, as well as uh, multiple instruments. So you can look uh, at uh, and access up to 20 instruments, okay, from GDAX. Uh, you also get the uh, advanced education and you get the uh, support, okay, full support. Uh, global, global version here is everything with Digital Plus, um, but it also includes support for futures and U.S. equities. Now, we don't provide the data. You will need to uh, provide it, but you can connect it. Okay, and it's $49 per month. Okay, also comes with the uh, uh, basic or advanced education. All right, the global plus here uh, is all markets. Uh, it is just like the global over here. Uh, the addition here uh, is that you get the uh, one-click trading as well as all of these add-on indicators. Okay, so you can. Um, uh, these are proprietary indicators we put together that start to identify uh, not only order flow phenomena, but specific players like the large lot tracker, uh, looking at the larger players, maybe skewing the book uh, with their, uh, their limit orders, uh, or maybe creating a vacuum uh, by pulling those limit orders. Uh, iceberg tracker, uh, you're able to see um, uh, where larger players uh, are, uh, uh, you know, they have um, hidden liquidity uh, using an iceberg order. Uh, they don't want to show their uh, position in the in the order book, right? Uh, and uh, some imbalance indicators as well as a correlation tracker here. All right. Uh, the, um, you can also see us here uh, with the, uh, or follow us here on um, uh, Twitter at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, and um, the, uh, Here's a message from our, our CEO here, as you can see. Uh, they messaged just uh, oh, six hours ago. Okay, haven't seen that one. Uh, and the um, uh, YouTube page here, all sorts of uh, videos uh, here. Uh, you can watch some of the intro videos here, uh, features and components. So if you want an overview of uh, 7.0, you can find it right here, front and center, under features and components. Uh, and then order flow video snippets. Uh, these are the concepts that we go through in detail in the advanced order flow webinar, okay? Uh, these are, these are um, uh, specific order flow phenomena uh, that uh, is uh, nicely visualized by Bookmap. Uh, and this is where you're gonna get the edge uh, with your trading, okay? All right, uh, that's that. Let's um, take a look at Bookmap uh, and uh, see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm just uh, kind of debating here what to what to look at. Uh, uh, we have the ES up here, but uh, I don't know if we're going to get a lot of movement out of it today. Okay, we're at the 2850 area. Um, let me hide this column here just a minute. There we go. Okay. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, 
let's go over and take a look at the NASDAQ. Uh, I think we're just going to see a little more movement today, probably in the, uh, in the NASDAQ. Um, okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, what are you looking at? Okay. Uh, it looks like it's a, a kind of foreign, uh, <laughs> maybe extremely foreign chart. Okay. Like nothing you've seen before. Uh, well, it's actually really uh, straightforward, simple <coughs> data that is being displayed here. There's only three elements in this chart. First element is the historical best bid and offer. Okay. The second element are the dots that you see here. Uh, these are transactions okay, on that historical best bid and offer. Okay. And... Uh, And then, and then we can also see here the um, uh, heat map, right? Now the heat map uh, is um, uh, very simply uh, just a recording of the, uh, the the dome, the limit order book. Okay, so that that's it. Those, those are the only three elements that we see here. Okay, so uh, let me compare it to a candlestick chart, and we'll just go through this uh, and take off all of these other levels of um, of data. Okay, and just look at a simple candlestick chart. Okay, this is, and let me get rid of this as well, just a moment. Okay, all right, uh, five minute candlestick chart. All right, well, uh, you know, we're looking at open high, low and close of a five minute period. Okay, you can see the bodies, the wicks, uh, we all know uh, candlesticks. Uh, and, um, the problem here, though, with the candlestick chart is there's just so much information. Uh, it's just not displayed here. Uh, at best, you're uh, just kind of reading the pressure in the candles is um, a very, very uh, a challenging thing to do because you, there's so much opacity here. You just don't know where the volume traded, uh, how much, um, uh, at, at what area in the candle, uh, and what type you know, the aggressor uh, on the buy side or the sell side. There's also microstructures that are going to be within this aggregated period. That's another problem. Okay, so let's just turn on the uh, microstructures by simply looking at the best bid and offer. Okay, so for example, uh, we can zoom in here. Uh, and I, we, we can already see, uh, you know, what, what occurred here uh, in this five-minute period. Okay, there's actually a few little microstructural areas, and a very key element here uh, is the breakdown below this structure. Okay, uh, and um, uh, so this candle here uh, is not really giving us the insight to that. It's going to the bottom of the range, and there could be a lot of buying down here, uh, and, it, and you could just uh, uh, go to the upside and break the highs. Okay, well, we just don't know. Uh, we, we don't have any clue uh, of what's happening here. Okay. Instead, uh, you, you can see very clearly with this uh, microstructure on with the historical best bid and offer what's going on. We came up and we made a high here, but we came right back down into the range. Okay, a back back up again. Okay, right back down into the range. Most of the volume is going to be trading in this range here. Okay, you can see one more break up here of this little structure. It is not sustained. Finally, we're, we're, we're breaking down to this area here. And you can see there's going to be a lot of volume that trades down here, and they're going to hit the uh, hit the bid really hard. And we're going to see red dots pulling the market down. Uh, we return back to where we broke from, but we accept lower. Okay, this is a breakdown, right? And this is what it uh, what it looks like. And this candlestick uh, is not giving us the the clarity that we need here. Okay, so let's turn on the volume and let's take a look. Okay. Well, you can see big cluster of volume here, and here's here's where uh, the the battle was won. Okay, by the uh, the aggressive uh, seller here. All right. Okay. So now we can start to understand really what's going on in the order flow here. Okay. Uh, very much like a footprint chart, uh, we can see the volume where it's trading, exactly where and exactly when. Now uh, a footprint chart, though. Uh, problem with it is it is aggregated data as well. Okay, you're not getting that microstructure, uh, and uh, and here in Bookmap uh, you are. So you can see the way volume is interacting in the context of structure. 
Okay, so for example, look at these little uh, lows here. Okay, and there's some there's some selling down here. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, what we what happened here was um, uh, we don't see big cluster of selling. Okay, and it didn't spend much time down here at all. Okay, it came right back up into the range. Okay, and then look at the buyers step in here above this little structural area. Okay, nice cluster of buying here. Okay, we come back down and we test actually. So there's a, you know, there's still some selling in here. Uh, we come back down and test kind of the center of this area here, which is going to be the POC or the point of control of this area. Okay, and in fact, I can I, I can show you exactly that uh, here. Okay, and um, I can put this within my chart range. Okay, and we can start to look at uh, the areas that uh, are mostly traded here. Okay, it's probably going to be around the 66 area here. Uh, obviously, the uh, point of control for the chart range here is uh, at 66 and a half, but uh, that's because we we broke above and we see significant volume up here. So it's probably going to be around this, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, 66 level or so. Okay, we can get that uh, get a little closer to it here. And see, I need to get this out of the range as well. Yeah, there it is. Okay, at 66. All right. Okay, so uh, we broke above that area. Okay, and we see significant volume up here, but we come back down and we test deeper into it, and it rejects again. Okay, so the and and this is where the bulls take control of it right here. All right. Now, ultimately. Uh, th this this move failed here. Okay, the, um, the what happened uh, in this uh, in the structure here was that uh, we see the little uh, moves to the upside here, and then uh, and then the buying just kind of dries up. Okay, there's there's uh, really really not uh, not much more uh, a buying like like it the way it auctioned here. Okay, we can very clearly see that. Okay, so what happened? Uh, above, see this area right here, this is where we broke from and we see the bind pull the market up, okay? Well, look where we broke down from, okay? Sellers have control here at this point, all right? So, um, uh, and um, uh, we come back and we're, we're gonna get a retest here, okay? Where do we retest? Right to where those sellers initiated, okay? And, uh, and you can see that uh, there, there is some buying up here, but there's just not enough, okay? This is the kind of detail and structure that I'm talking about. And we only have two elements here on the book map chart. And I can't see any of that structure uh, or understanding with this candlestick chart, okay? So uh, that's the, uh, the demo with the candles and what, how it lies or it's not giving us the opacity or the transparency that we need. Uh, and um, so ultimately, uh, we see the uh, the sellers start to take control. We st we start to see some nice clusters of volume down here. We break the low, and then we break it pretty harsh uh, or pretty quickly here. Okay, buyers step right back in, uh, but um, uh, just just not enough at this point. Okay, sellers take it down low again, lower again, and you can see uh, you know all sorts of things going on here. Um, and um, uh, again, like this breakdown here, well, it wasn't sustained either, okay? Uh, in fact, the same patterns that we just went through, look what happened here, okay? Buyers step right back in and trade it right back into this range, okay? Right back into where? The point of control, okay? And uh, uh, we're understanding the context of the volume here, right? Uh, we come back and we test here. Uh, at 62, where we broke from uh, again, and we can see that uh, it, it accepted above this area here. So, um, you know, it's uh, uh, buyers are starting to step back in here. Okay, nice cluster of selling here, but this is where this is where it changes is up here. Okay, we're we're starting to break above that traded volume, uh, and you can just see. Look at the order flow. Okay, look at the color and size of the dots, and you can just see that there's more green in in this area here. All right. Okay. So uh, let me just zoom into this area and show you really what we're displaying because it's very simple data, but it, it gives so much insight here. Um, uh, this is it. Historical best bid and offer. Okay. Best bid is the green line. Best offer is the uh, 
of the red line. Okay. Now these transactions here or the dots, uh, this is market buy orders. Okay. Someone hit the market buy button and they took liquidity off of the best bid. Or I'm sorry, the best offer. Okay. Now uh, we can use this data tip tool here and hover over these little dots and we can get exactly what occurred here. Okay. However, we can continue to zoom in and look how Bookmap is displaying every single transaction uh, in the marketplace. We are down at microsecond levels here. We can go down to nanosecond levels, okay, billions of seconds, right? Uh, I'll spare you that uh, uh, that demo, but uh, the point here is every single uh, event is uh, recorded and plotted onto the chart, okay? And then as I zoom out though, note how we're handling all of that data and we put it into a bigger dot. Okay. And if I hover over that dot, it, it's giving me the precise data. It's giving me the time, okay, uh, the date, the time, what was on the ask here, okay, the amount of liquidity, 51 contracts at this price level, and then this volume, okay, 23. Okay, this is for 23 contracts. All right. So uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at here uh, in Bookmap uh, with the two elements uh, of just a historical best bid and offer. And transactions that alone is is uh, is plenty uh, however uh, we want another element here uh, that's very very critical to understand uh, in context to market movement and that is the auction okay now how, traditionally how we um, uh, read the auction is through the dome the depth of market okay like for example right now look up here at 85 we see 255 contracts up here Okay, so quite quite a bit, and we're testing right into it right now. There we go. Okay, so we can see that uh, it traded into it, and you can see that we sold off immediately after that. Okay, very very quickly there. This was a key element, and that wasn't seen uh, in the chart. It was seen in the dome. Okay, you wouldn't have known that by looking just at the chart. Okay, the problem here is now that data is gone. Okay, look the liquidity up here looks normal now. Okay, it's back to 43 contracts, All right? Uh, but um, you know, we want to we want to understand what happened in some of these areas and how they're um, auctioning. Uh, were the sellers really interested here, or, or were they, uh, 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 you know, shying away from uh, the auction and wanted to maybe sell at uh, at higher levels? Okay? All this kind of information is very difficult to read in a dome. Uh, because you have to memorize it, okay? And you can see that these numbers are changing constantly. So what we do uh, to alleviate that is we record it in the heat map, okay? And um, so these these uh, uh, numeric values here in the dome okay, are recorded. So um, uh, in this window here, this is your best bid and offer right here, and this is your last traded volume. And... Um, uh, here's your price ladder, and this is your dome. Okay, so these um, uh, high areas of liquidity in the heat map, uh, you can see 74 contracts, 71 contracts, right? And it's painted bright or you know uh, uh, yellow. You can see the scaling here from from dark gray, very little liquidity, on up to orange being the highest liquidity. Okay, so we know the auction where they're bidding and offering. We can see, here's here's our, our record of what just happened so quickly here, All right? Let's zoom into that area because a lot of a lot of traders will tell you, well, yeah, I like to know where they are in the bid and the offer, but they're they're all, um, uh, they're all fake orders anyway, it, and you can't just make a distinction between what's going on. Well, we can, okay, that, that's, that's not true. Uh, here, here's your distinction right here at 85. They stayed in the book and they traded, okay? This is what it looks like. This is what absorption looks like. High liquidity, okay? Uh, we saw the uh, uh, the contract size up here was 244, and then look at the transactions taking that liquidity right here. And look what, look what traded here. 240 contracts have traded here. Okay, this, this is fact. All right, 
so we know exactly what occurred here, and we know that this is not fake liquidity. This is real liquidity. They stayed in the book and they traded. Okay, this is uh, some of these areas above. Look how they're starting to behave up here. Okay, I mean there there's 92 contracts here, and then it goes into yellow. Okay, it goes into like a, a 85 or this white area here, uh, 80 contracts. Okay, so uh, they're starting to pull a little bit of liquidity here. Uh, starting to add a little bit of liquidity up here, which is kind of funny, from 75 to 80 contracts to 81. Anyway, uh, making a distinction between uh, that liquidity is going to be helpful for us, okay? Because we can see uh, this is this was totally absorbed, okay? What about fake liquidity? What does that look like, All right? Well, this is what it looks like here. Okay, here's their high liquidity, and as the market's coming up to it, this is see really nice book sweep here, uh, up into this area, and they're pulling. Okay, they didn't trade up here. These uh, 74 contracts that you see here, they pulled. Okay, now there's 34 contracts up here. Okay, total volume of 45 traded up at this area. Okay, so we know that they don't really have the intent to trade up here. Uh, they wanted to trade a, a little bit higher and a little bit higher yet. To me, it looks like this player right here pulled his liquidity because at the same moment, he added up here. So we're starting to identify specific players and their behavior and their intent to trade. Okay, Their intent to trade was not at this area here. It was up higher. All right. So just understanding the context of the auction and their intent to trade gives us a lot of insight to what's going on here with price. All right. So anyway, that's an overview of Bookmap. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, you've got the uh, the link there for the uh, advanced webinar. Uh, if you uh, want to see what we do uh, in terms of reading the context and starting to um, uh, uh, understand the uh, um, uh, or start to anticipate uh, future movement uh, in price. Uh, by putting objectively reading this context and putting it together, uh, then join us in this webinar, okay? All right.